Rough stories coming up on Eyewitness News. There were cheers for the bullets this afternoon from the Capitol Center to the District Building, to the White House, to RFK Stadium. We'll have live reports on the festivities from Pat Collins and Mike Buchanan, and more on the bullets from Glenn Brenner. Black office holders from around the nation converged on Washington today to complain about the FBI and other law enforcement agencies. Bruce Johnson has that story. NASA's flight controllers today fixed the orbit of Skylab to keep it circling the Earth a while longer. Steve Gendel reports. Bob Strickland winds up his reports on local fraudulent fundraising with some advice on how to avoid phony charity campaigns. Virginia Democrats met in Williamsburg today to begin picking a U.S. Senate candidate. Susan King has a preview of the weekend's balloting. Gordon Barnes has his own preview of the weekend weather outlook. And Henry Tenenbaum tells of some mysterious caves to explore in a rather unlikely place. These stories and more as the Eyewitness News Service continues now with Maureen Bunyan and Gordon Peterson. Good evening. It's Bullets Day in Washington. Thousands of the championship Bullets fans have turned out to honor them. They've hit the district building, the White House, and RFK Stadium. We have live reports now from RFK from Mike Buchanan and Pat Collins. What's going on down there? Live from RFK Stadium, it's Friday afternoon, and it's time for the NBA champs, the Washington Bullets. We've got 4,000 people waiting to greet the Bullets. The crowd started forming about 2.30 this afternoon and it's continuing to grow. And believe me, they are ready to cheer. They've already had some warm-up sessions. Pat Collins has been with the Bullets since they left the Capitol Center earlier today. Pat? Mike, it was an incredible thing. You know, I was with the Bullets on their motorcade. They literally stopped this city. As they went through the town of Sea Pleasant, there were school children out there with posters. They went past businesses. The businesses stopped. The people came out of the businesses, waved. They created traffic jams, went on for miles, but unlike the normal Washington response, no one got angry, they just got out and made the big number one sign, and the, the city just went on and on and on. It's sort of like a Washington's version of a New York ticker tape parade. And uh, right out here now we have thousands and it's growing, and the bullets uh, themselves, where well, we've been with them this, today, uh, I think they're sort of worn by the whole thing. It's like they played a whole uh, another half of basketball, but they're in good spirits, and. I know they're looking forward to see the crowd out here. We're waiting for Big E and Wes. We're waiting for the whole team, Bobby D and CJ. And when they arrive here, it ought to be quite a reception. Of course, from the district building, we now figure they're probably at the Capitol building and should be here shortly. This is Mike Buchanan along with Pat Collins, Eyewitness News at the RFK Stadium Rally for the world champion, Washington Bullets. Well, it all began this morning with a rally at the Capitol Center, followed by a motorcade into Washington, destination the district building. Chris Gordon has that part of the story. The bullets rode into town like conquering heroes, like the gladiators of old atop chariots, basking in the adulation of the crowds that lined the parade route from the Capitol Center to the district building. All along the route, fans shouted, we're number one. And even the police along the route said, we are the champs. And the players' faces showed unrestrained joy. Mitch Kupchak saying this was better than winning the gold medal at Montreal. The size of the crowd increased as the parade got closer to town. And with arms outstretched, bullet fans reached out to touch those who brought the NBA championship to the nation's capital. It was a day of celebration, from the common person to the politician, and only the supersonics held in effigy as they hung along the street corner was the only somber moment. This was the day to share in the success of the Bullets and the success they have brought to town as the champions of the NBA. This is Chris Gordon, Eyewitness News. From the district building, the bullets headed for the White House. We have a report on that from Steve Gendell. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce the champions of the world, the Washington Bullets. Today, the fat lady met the President of the United States. Not since FBI was in office has Washington had a sports champion. 
So it's not surprising, perhaps, that the Marine Band found a version of Ruffles and Flourishes that sounded suspiciously like Bullets Fever. And Abe Bolin even went as far as to offer the president a spot on the team as the Bullets number two draft choice. There's a fat lady here, I was... <laughs> I wish I had thought of that during the 1976 campaign. <laughs> There were a lot of times during 1976 when I thought the ball game might be over, at least other people did, but I knew the fat lady had to sing. And I, I think one of the things that made this remarkable success possible is the fact that it was not built upon a single person. They're obviously stars, and they're obviously those who show that they are the most valuable, valuable player in a particular game or even in the great series. But what made this tremendous victory possible for the Bullets is the fact that it was a team effort. On behalf of the team and the entire Bullet organization, a great deal of honor to present a basketball to the President of the United States. This is unreal. This is unreal. <laughs> See, I told you, watch carefully. The President did meet the fat lady. Even dribbled the basketball a couple of times. In fact, the president said he had just one regret in this all. Why, he said, why did the Bullets have to beat Atlanta? Steve Gendell, Eyewitness News. Well, the Bullets are leaving the Capitol building now on their way to RFK Stadium. When they get there, we'll be there, and that means you'll be there, too. Stay with us. Maureen? Well, in addition to congratulating the Bullets, President Carter today also asked Congress to approve 26 new water projects. This is the first time in four years that the White House has recommended new water project construction. The projects would cost $718 million, with the biggest single one being the Big South Fork National River and Recreation Area in Kentucky and Tennessee. Also today, the Senate overwhelmingly approved two bills designed to step up safety inspection of thousands of dams across the country, which have been called hazardous. A Las Vegas jury has ruled that the so-called Mormon will of billionaire Howard Hughes is a fake. That means there's no will to determine what happens to Hughes' millions. Sarah Edwards reports. The verdict was unanimous. It took the eight-member panel only 11 hours to reach a decision after hearing seven months of testimony. They concluded that the three-page document was not written by Howard Hughes. In spite of the verdict, the estate of the late billionaire Hughes will remain in limbo until it is settled in the courts. But the verdict had an immediate effect on the most famous of the will's beneficiaries, Melvin Dumar. The Utah truck driver lost any hope of gaining one-sixteenth of the vast Hughes fortune. The ruling also came as a stern blow to Harold Roden, the attorney representing longtime Hughes associate Noah Dietrich, who tried to prove the will was genuine. I'm sorry they brought in the verdict they did, but that's our system. It was a fair trial, and that's the verdict they brought in. Would there be an appeal? Well, I'm supposed to say, oh, yeah, we're going to appeal. But I don't, the truth is, I doubt it. I doubt it very much. The decision meant victory for the attorneys representing Hughes' relatives not named in the will. They claimed the document was a fraud and challenged the credibility of Melvin Dumar's story. This one was just too strange and too full of uh, fanciful stories and things that made it Alice in Wonderland, really, I think. When the verdict came in, Melvin Dumar was playing guitar for a church dance in Ogden, Utah. I'm just kind of numb. I, I didn't really expect the jury to come back the way they did, but uh, I guess that's, if that's the way they feel, then, I mean, there's nothing I can do about it. You say you, say you weren't surprised? You were surprised? Yes, I was surprised to see him come back that way, yes. The story of the Mormon will has come to an end. The jury has ruled it a forgery. But the gnawing question that remains is, if Howard Hughes didn't write the will, who did? Sarah Edwards for CBS News, Las Vegas. 
The Washington Post reports today that the Labor Department this week began an investigation into possible mismanagement of Teamsters union funds in Washington and Baltimore. The Post says $21 million in pension and health and welfare funds may be involved. The Labor Department investigators are looking into possible violations of the Employee Retirement Income Security Act. That's a law which safeguards beneficiaries of pension funds against improper actions by fund administrators. The head of the National Black Conference of Mayors, who is under indictment himself, is in Washington complaining that federal law enforcement authorities are harassing black officials. Bruce Johnson has that story when we come back. And Steve Gandell will come back with a report on how NASA put the new Skylab into orbit today. We'll be right back. For one day only, Saturday at Luskin's, this Westinghouse 5000 BTU air conditioner is just $128. For one day only, Saturday at Luskin's, this brand name two-door refrigerator freezer is just $219. For one day only, Saturday at Luskin's, this Zenith 19-inch chroma color TV is just $288. Save on hundreds of specially priced items, Saturday at Luskin's, for one day only. There's something very new and very special at Hardee's. Something so big, so beefy, people are ordering it in a very special way. A big cheese. The big cheese is Hardee's special new double cheeseburger. It's so special, people are stepping up and saying, a big cheese. A big cheese. Hardy's new big cheese. Smile when you say that. The federal government is taking the Exxon Corporation to court for allegedly overcharging customers some $183 million for crude oil. The Energy Department filed the suit and it claims that Exxon took advantage of a pricing system under which the company was allowed to charge more for oil after the 1973 Arab oil embargo. And the Ford Motor Company today announced the recall of a million and a half Ford Pintos and Mercury Bobcats. Ford says the recall is to strengthen fuel tanks and reduce the risk of tank explosion. Black leaders from across the country are in Washington today. One of the reasons is to complain to FBI and other investigative agencies about their treatment of elected black officials. Eyewitness News correspondent Bruce Johnson has a report. Allegations aimed at black elected officials was the major concern of many blacks who gathered in Washington this week for the Democratic National Committee meetings. I was removed as Secretary of State just at the time that I was going to be named National President of all the Secretaries of State. I wasn't even charged, but I was removed with a charge of uh, misconduct in office without a hearing, without any kind of uh, uh, legal um, procedures. If an FBI office received an anonymous charge, unfounded, unsubstantiated whatsoever, that major investigations have taken place uh, based upon nothing more uh, uh, solid than that. Lieutenant Governor Merv Dimely, Lieutenant Governor George Brown, C. Delores Tucker, uh, Charles Diggs, Shirley Chisholm, all of these people were charged. Congressman Clay, half of the congresspersons of color in this country have been charged and not one of them have been proven guilty. Black leaders are convinced that there exists a conspiracy to discredit them, an argument which was strengthened by recent discovery that the FBI solicited the assistance of an unnamed black to help discredit the late civil rights leader Martin Luther King Jr. I can say unequivocally from the information I've seen, the files that I have, that the person involved in my judgment was not Roy Wilkins. Who was the person? Uh, I don't know who the person was, but in my judgment, it clearly was not Roy Wilkins. It was the FBI Martin Luther King incident that prompted Pritchard, Alabama Mayor A.J. Cooper to come to Washington today for a special meeting with FBI Director William Webster. Cooper is head of the National Conference of Black Mayors. Uh, we did not go there in the spirit of either you do this or else. 
Uh, we went there in the spirit of trying to say to Judge Webster that we felt the FBI to be a much needed domestic law enforcement agency, but that it had lost the confidence and trust of the American people and especially the black community, and that we had some suggestions which we thought could help. How did he react to uh, those suggestions? Uh, he was very positive, as I said earlier. I'm not going to be able to tell you specifically uh, what the several agreements were. It was just yesterday that Cooper was indicted by a grand jury. He's charged with demanding kickbacks from an Alabama construction firm. I was named in a one-count indictment, and uh, like all muddy water, it's going to have to flow under the bridge, and we're going to have to uh, see whether it flows muddy or clear. But uh, as John says in the Bible, judge not things by their appearance. Uh, and I'm confident that uh, we will be quite successful in a most defendable matter. Mayor Cooper says that on Monday at a press conference in Atlanta, he'll unveil completely the agreements reached today with the FBI here in Washington. This is Bruce Johnson reporting for Eyewitness News. Joanne Little was put on a plane in New York today and flown back to North Carolina to finish serving a prison term. Three years ago, Miss Little drew nationwide attention when she was acquitted of murdering a jailer she said assaulted her. Last year, she escaped from a North Carolina jail, but was captured several months later in New York. Miss Little tried to avoid extradition by fighting in the state and federal courts. She said that she would rather die than return to North Carolina. But last week, the Supreme Court ruled against her, and she is going back to serve a 17-year term for breaking and entering. The president of the Mormon Church announced today that he has received a revelation from God that will permit black Mormons to become priests. Thus ends a 148-year policy of excluding black males from the priesthood, which is open to all other male church members in good standing over the age of 12. All Mormon women are excluded from the lay priesthood. Church President Spencer Kimball says that he and other Mormon leaders had spent hours in the upper room of the Salt Lake City Temple asking the Lord for divine guidance, and says Kimball, he has heard our prayers. In March, we reported the Skylab satellite may be in danger of falling out of orbit and crashing back to Earth. But today, NASA succeeded in maneuvers that may keep Skylab afloat. Eyewitness News correspondent Steve Gendel reports. NASA today fired commands of the orbiting Skylab satellite to turn on the last of its gyroscopes and align its solar power cells toward the sun. Skylab, the largest object in orbit, has been in an erratic orbit, tumbling through space. That put the Skylab within grasp of the Earth's upper atmosphere, slowing its speed and threatening its orbit. At the same time, it made communications more difficult. Remember, the Skylab had been dormant for almost four years, but NASA managed to reach through 300 miles of space and give the Skylab commands, first to recharge its batteries, then today the more complex maneuvers to stabilize its orbit, hopefully until a space shuttle can bring a booster rocket up to the Skylab or more maneuvers can be arranged. Although final details have to be worked out tomorrow, NASA officials said today's efforts were so successful, they're now well ahead of schedule. Without these maneuvers, scientists feared the 85-ton Skylab would plummet to Earth by October 1979. Now, it should be up at least through 1980, when a space shuttle hopefully can arrive. Steve Gendel, Eyewitness News. Coming up, Bob Strickland with more on fraudulent fundraising schemes in this area. Stay with us. That's my dad. He loves to play catch with me. This Father's Day, your dad will love The Natural by Manhattan from Hex. That's my dad, showing me how to climb a tree. The Natural, with the comfort of cotton polyester and the convenience of permanent press. That's my dad. He's always full of surprises. This Father's Day, surprise your dad with The Natural by Manhattan from Hex. Fix a dish that's delicious and delicate, moist and mouth-watering, fresh and flavorful, light and luscious. Just open a can of bumblebee tuna. I love the tuna that's called bumblebee. Bumblebee, it's so good you can eat it plain. Mitch Kupchak, you're real easy going. Anything ever make you mad? No, I never get mad. How about when an official makes a bad call on you? That's the way the ball bounces. No, it doesn't make me mad. Well, how about when you buy a new car and you find out too late that you might have saved $300? Now that makes me mad! Don't you get fouled up. Before you buy any new car, find out how much you might save at Rosenthal Chevrolet. Don't make it! 
One and only TV9. President Carter today urged the nation's senior citizens to form an army of volunteers to help clean up deteriorating neighborhoods, aid those less fortunate themselves. Mr. Carter told more than 4,000 delegates to the annual convention of the National Council of Senior Citizens here, quote, your ability and talent are a resource we cannot afford to waste. Among the achievements he cited by prominent elderly Americans were those of his 79-year-old mother, Lillian Carter. For two weeks, Eyewitness News correspondent Bob Strickland has been uncovering a series of shady fundraising ventures run by Dennis Advertising. The firm operates from offices in Silver Spring and Baltimore. And tonight, in a concluding report, Bob shows the techniques that have enabled Dennis to raise millions of dollars from Washington area donors under false pretenses. We've shown that Dennis Advertising raises hundreds of thousands of dollars every year by duping generous people who want to help the disadvantaged. The telephone has been the main ingredient to Dennis Advertising's success. A door-to-door -door salesperson might be able to make pitches to a dozen persons every day. Dennis' phone solicitors can reach ten times as many. An honest phone solicitation is one thing. The pitch technique used by Dennis is another. Now, the last solicitation call that we got, he represented that we had contributed to a magazine. He said, you took out a half page last year, and when we checked the records, we'd never taken out any. What do you make of this? Fraud. <laughs> I mean, somebody is padding their pocket. Dennis also hides behind false addresses. Funds are raised for an alleged newspaper called The Labor Review. Checks mailable to editorial offices at 8415 Georgia Avenue in Silver Spring. That turns out to be the address of Dennis Advertising. There's no editorial office here, and we can't find a single copy of The Labor Review. The alleged headquarters for Police Fire Post 2979 proved to be only a mail drop in a union local building on Rhode Island Avenue. And checks for the Knights of Columbus don't go to a regional committee, as it says on the invoice. The address on the invoice is 1806 Franwall Street in Silver Spring. That's the home of Leonard Stanley, who runs the Dennis Advertising operations in the Washington area. Even the phone book is used for a facade. When you call Police Fire Post 2979 in Washington, you get Dennis Advertising in Silver Spring. Only a small fraction of the money raised by Dennis Advertising gets to the charities involved, usually less than 10%. Sometimes none of the money goes where the donor is intended. So how can you be sure your contribution will go to the fund instead of the fundraiser? Jerry Saxon found a way. I received a phone call and this man identified himself being from the Elks and he said uh, he asked for a donation uh, in the same amount that we, I guess, had donated the year before. And uh, I had told him, fine, I'd be glad to donate, but I just wanted to see a breakdown of how the money was being spent first. And then a day or two later, a gentleman, or, or a bill arrives in the mail. So I gave him a call, I called him up and I said, I asked for a breakdown. and. Uh, I got a bill, and this gentleman said, uh, well, what's the number on the bill? So I gave him the number on the bill, and he said, just a minute. And he came back a moment later, and he said, I said don't worry about that, Mr. Saxon, it won't happen again. So I'll get that for you, and then I never received anything else. Stanley? Uh, I don't want to be interviewed by you. you talk with us? That was a response I got from Dennis Advertising in Silver Spring when I sought comment from manager of Ben Stanley. Hey, stay out of my office. Dennis Advertising has been successful for 20 years, and a 1976 Maryland law on charitable fundraising has had no effect on the operation. However, as a result of the Eyewitness News expose, there are some changes. Dennis no longer is soliciting in the name of sickle cell anemia research. Little League officials are seeking an injunction to restrain further solicitations by Dennis. State and Montgomery County officials have begun investigating the firm, and federal grand jury proceedings are underway on suspicion of mail fraud. We'll keep you posted. I'm Bob Strickland, Eyewitness News. You are about to see a world record broken. 
21-year-old Bob Specker today engineered the collapse of 100,000 dominoes at Manhattan Center in New York. Specker broke the world record when 55,000 dominoes fell in 17 minutes and 42 seconds. The 100,000 falling domino sequence was hindered a bit when a spectator caused an untipped domino to fall by mistake, but Specker finished the sequence anyway. The stunt was held to raise funds for the National Hemophilia Foundation, in case you're wondering why anybody would want to topple 100,000 dominoes. Well, it was for a good cause. <laughs> must have taken hours to put this Indeed. down. Indeed. So. Coming up, Glenn Brenner with more on the Bullets' Great Hurrah. And like also... Uh, yes, catchy. And when he's done, Gordon Barnes will have more on the Great Weekend coming up. Stay with us. Stop. Stop using ordinary pool chlorine. Start using once-a-week tally. It's the new, long-lasting chemical you throw in your pool only once a week. Once a week tarry, available in throwaway dispenser or simple to load tablets for your own dispenser. Stop, stop daily pool care with once a week tarry. Make the good life a lot better. Available at Montgomery Wards and Nichols. Got a toothache? Use Anbisol. For a baby with teething pain, use Anbisol. Denture pain, use Anbisol. Anbisol kills minor mouth pain on contact. Look, irritated nerve endings in the mouth. Anbisol with three anesthetics deadens pain immediately. Works for hours. So when you have a toothache, use Anbisol. For teething pain, use Anbisol. For denture pain, cold sores too. Use Anbisol. Anbisol kills pain on contact. Kamenko? Uh, you bet I do. Nobody beats Memco for sporting goods. Like this Igloo Playmate cooler. Sturdy, holds 15 quarts. Memco's price, just $8.99. Save on all name brands at Memco. Coleman, Zebco, Garcia, more. Just can't wait for the weather to get better. Hmm? I make sure my passengers are taken care of, and low prices are part of that care. Just look at these. We slashed our regular price by 40% on selected schedules between New York and Washington. Now a one-way fare costs only $12. Call Trailways for details. You get low prices and drivers you can count on. That's a promise from Trailways. You're not alone when you're traveling Trailways. This Right here. See that? Yes, I do. This is the motorcade mm -hmm. taking the bullets from the Capitol building over to RFK Stadium, mm -hmm. where there will be a big rally. Mm -hmm. There, in live, right there. That's mm -hmm. it. Isn't yes. that miraculous? That is, it is miraculous. Uh, this right now is a, uh, a shot of someone's home. Uh, we're, we're going down to Pat Buchanan. Who lives there? <laughs> Pat Buchanan, uh, Edgar Buchanan, Mike Buchanan, and Pat Collins are standing by live right now at RFK Stadium. That's the scene you're seeing. Mike and Pat, Mike and Meyer, can you hear me? Hey, we hear you. We're still holding here at RFK Stadium. We've gotten word that the Bullets motorcade is now about 12th and 13th Street, East Capitol, headed this way. What a reception they've got here. The question is, will they ever make it? We haven't seen any traffic move around the circle here at RFK in the last hour or so. I think some people have just given up, gotten out of their cars, and joined the party here. We're having a ball. These people, these people started coming here about 2.30 this afternoon, and it's been growing, just been growing consistently and constantly. They started out as picnics, they had some picnickers, but that, that space is gone. So we're estimating uh, can he maybe... Hear me? Can I ask him a question? Oh, sure. Go ahead and ask a question. Good. How, how, long, do you think, <laughs> how long do you think it'll be before they get there, Buck? Well, I don't uh, know. Just, uh, wait, write it down and send it to me. Uh, no, no, that's okay. I'm sorry. I'm just estimating. <laughs> We've got the, the traffic jam. I just wonder how they're going to get in here, Glenn. All right. Uh, so I don't know if you can see the traffic. Maybe 15, maybe 10, 15 minutes. Okay, I can't even see you. But when they get back... I can't see me either. When they, when they <laughs> arrive, would you give us a buzz back here and we'll come back out to you? I'll call you. 
All right, thank you, sir. So long. All right. Wait, Incidentally, wait, what you didn't see when he was trying to talk to him at first, he's going, Buck, can you hear me? Lord, <laughs> <laughs> well, there's not a lot of noise out work. there. It doesn't work, huh? <laughs> Incidentally, they had a parade in Seattle today. And they had these trucks going down the main streets with big billboards saying, we're number two and proud of it. That was really, it was at about 5,000 people. That's nice. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Before the festivities got underway this afternoon, the Bullets front office had to take a, care of a little business at the Cap Center, namely the NBA draft. Don Shane reports tonight that the Bullets selected some solid prospects. It was the largest turnout ever for a bullet draft, a draft that Washington general manager Bob Ferry said was somewhat weak talent-wise. The Bullets had two first-round picks, their own, number 14, and the 18th pick as a result of the Bo Ellis trade with Denver last year. After New Jersey took Winford Boynes, Ferry made his first selection. The Bullets' first-round pick this year will be Roger Fagley of Bradley University. That's the world champion, Bullets. World she will. <laughs> Humility, Bob. Fagley averaged 27.6 points per game last year and almost 54% field goal accuracy. He's a strong defensive player who may be counted on more heavily if Phil Chenier doesn't return because of his back injury. Uh, probably thinking in the, along the large guard uh, uh, area first. We don't know the physical condition of uh, Phil Chenier. We need some protection behind Kevin Grevy. Four picks later, the Bullets got some backup strength for center Wes Unsell. The selection was very popular with the fans at the Cap Center. The Bullets take Dave Corzine to Paul University. I think Wes will be back next year. Uh, he, he had a great year this year, and he's, um, he, he, he fits in here, and I'm very comfortable with him, and I, I feel that, you know, that he's an integral part of the Washington Bullets. Number one pick Michael Thompson of Minnesota was the only center taken ahead of Corzine. In the second round, the Bullets took 6-7 forward Terry Sykes from Grambling. He was a teammate of Larry Wrights in college. In the third, it was Rick Apke from Creighton. And in the fourth, a local player, forward Larry Boston from the University of Maryland. I'm Don Shane, Eyewitness Sports at the Capitol Center. In the fifth round today, the Bullets went for Roger Dickens of Towson State. In the sixth round, they selected Archie Aldridge of Miami of Ohio. The seventh, they went for Ed Hopkins of Georgetown. In the eighth, they selected Nestor Cora of St. Francis of New York. Uh, ninth round, they selected Tim Claxton of Temple. The first player selected in the draft today was Michael Thompson, a 6'10 center from the University of Minnesota. He went to the Portland Trailblazers, who already had a pretty decent center. Phil Ford of North Carolina went in the first round to Kansas City. Rick Roby, the 6'10 center from Kentucky, was the first pick of the Indiana Pacers. Butch Lee of Marquette went on the first round to Atlanta. Jack Givens of Kentucky also went on the first round to Atlanta. Larry Bird of Indiana State, a 6'9 forward and considered one of the best prospects in the country, was taken in the first round by the Boston Celtics. Bird, however, still has one more year of eligibility, and he says he intends to stay in college. The Atlanta Hawks today picked Gerald Glover of Howard University on the sixth round. Glover is the is, is six seven forward. He is the first player in the history of the school ever to be drafted into the NBA. Okay, Mima Yasovic and Virginia Ruzic moved into the women's finals today at the French Open. Yasovic knocked off Regina Marishkova in straight sets, 6-3, 6-4. I'm just starting to get her name, and now she's been eliminated. And Brigitte to Simon, uh, Simon in straight sets. Beaten by Ruzic today in straight sets, 6-3, 6-0. Oh. The men's semifinals are tomorrow. Only five horses have been entered for tomorrow's running of the Belmont Stakes. It actually shapes up as a match race between Derby and Preakness winner Affirmed, who's hoping to become the third horse in this decade to win the Triple Crown, and Alidar, who finished second to Affirmed in both those races. The other three horses are just along for the ride. Affirmed was beaten by Alidar in six of eight meetings. In the two races that Alidar managed to win, Affirmed... They were both run at Belmont Park. Now, eight horses have won the Derby and the Preakness and wound up losing at Belmont. The Belmont is the longest of the three races at a mile and a half. And if you remember, Ali Dar was beaten by a length and a half at the Derby and by a nostril at the Preakness. Okay. Ali Dar's a strong finisher. Okay. So that, uh, what? Enough about horses. They're That's there. Enough. They're, the there. They're, there. They're there. The here. bullets have arrived. Buck, come on in. <laughs> Are you down there, buddy? <laughs> Can you hear me? <laughs> I can't hear anything. Okay. Buckaroob, yeah, go ahead. Talk to me. We, have, we haven't seen them yet, but we have a suspicion, just a sneaky hunch that they're here. Somebody's seen them. Have they arrived? Or? They're here and they're coming in, Glenn. Okay. They'll be coming up on the podium pretty soon. Okay. They are, uh, the crowd really hasn't gotten a good look at them yet. They just heard they were coming, and this is the kind of reception. Well, we'll stay yep. with you, Buck. All right. Here they come now. I can see them. 
You got a better view than we got. Yeah, we yeah. can see them. We can see them. Why don't we tell you what's happening? Oh, good. Why don't you give us a play-by-play? -play? <laughs> <laughs> there they are. There they are. There's the trophy. There's Ed Pollen. There's an echo in here. Who's the man fixing the microphone? There's Charlie Brotman. He runs an advertising agency here in town. There's the man. A friend of Charlie Brotman's. <laughs> There's Elvin. You can see Elvin. Buck, can you get close to talk to any of the players? Well, I don't know. We're above them, so to speak. There's Frank Herzog up there. We saw Frank. To the left of your picture. There's Kevin Grevy, right to the left of the trophy. Greg Ballard now coming up on the stage. Mar Brooks, the PA announcer. That's a shot from our helicopter, which is hovering high above RFK Stadium at this very moment. And we hope it will continue to do so. Let's continue, that's right. There's Cup Check, shirt sleeves. And there's Big E. Uh, Big e. Hold on to your wallet. Hold on to your wallet, Elvin. It's a big day. Obviously, it goes without saying, but I mean, it's something that's a once-in-a-lifetime shot. Uh, Lance Gordon. Yeah. Uh, you're hearing that? That's not coming over the microphone. I think if you open the door, you can hear that. <laughs> Somebody wants him to sign an autograph? Hi, hey, Kevin! The man who waited 10 years. Today. Gives you some idea of the imposing size of the man. Yeah, they do. Oh, oh my uh -oh. Well, he's, romance. Just, he's just been attacked. Oh, yeah. <laughs> little romance. <laughs> That's the way it is when I leave work every night. Yeah, you know, yeah. <laughs> just come in and they grab me. They long for these guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be worse than Marvin Wilson. Buck, can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead, Glenn. Are you getting near any of the players? I'm afraid to. <laughs> <laughs> This is what it was like for Glenn when he played uh, baseball. Yeah. <laughs> the crowd now has just they torn were down swinging. the ropes. Uh -uh, there they come. That was that was restraining them from the stage area, and now he is smothered. What's the crowd the estimate? The Mike, Pat, what's the crowd estimate? Do you know? We got to have ten thousand by now, don't you think, Pat? I think 10,000, easy, and it's still growing. You can still see people coming in from the outskirts. How about along, uh, along the, the parade? The crowd is just pressed right up against the stage here. How about along the parade the crowd, route today? How many people uh, like do they estimate there? This afternoon, they tried to hold a ceremony, and the only re way you could see the basketball players is they were the tall guy to crush. They're asking about Pat, they were asking about the parade route today. Was it like this? At certain points, they stopped traffic, and people would swarm on the parade route and it would stop the parade. It was so bad in Prince George's County, the police chief had to get out and direct traffic. And I've never seen a police chief direct traffic before. I think we'll be getting started in a few minutes with a ceremony. I don't know if they're ever gonna, I don't know if they're ever gonna let anybody talk or not. It's like 10 New Year's Eves all wrapped into one. <laughs> Is there a schedule of speakers? Or is, is, uh, who's supposed to speak spur uh, first? Uh, who speaks first? Yeah, that's right. I 
think they're trying to get to try and get the program started. The first task is they had ropes and they had barriers up to hold back the crowd away from the platform. That was futile to say the least. That's a nice shot, right? Yeah. We may pat I've never seen anything like <laughs> it. It gives you some idea of the crowd. Yeah. <clears throat> This is Abe Poland trying to, to get the crowd's attention now. He has their attention. He's trying to get them to quiet down, I guess. All right, they appear to have some audio problems. Yeah. They're trying to get squared away so Abe Poland can talk to the crowd. That's the only way to stop this. How long do you know? He's like a rock concert. Get the gear up here. This is the public address. This is the public address. This is what? You'll see some people. Quiet! 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 Good luck. Quiet! 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 We gotta make a little money here, and uh, things haven't started anyway. We'll be back in a couple of minutes. Stay with us. And we're going back, right? Yes. Okay. Sure. Of course. We're going. A little hey, commercial. We'll, we'll be right be back. back. Yeah. Bullet fever. <laughs> <laughs> Tomorrow, for people in the Washington area who can spot a money-saving value, the magic number is 100. At Dick Stevens Chevrolet in Wheaton, we're having a perfect threesome sale on 100 Caprices, Monte Carlos, and Monza. You can buy Monza for only $35.55. $35.55. That's a new car at a used car price. Caprices are discounted $1,000. We're having the sale because these are the last shipments of 78s. This may be the last time we'll have new Chevys for under $3,600. Pick yours out tomorrow at Dick Stevens Chevrolet on Georgia Avenue in Wheaton. George's Marathon Sale starts tomorrow with this Philco Solid State 19-inch Diagonal Color TV, only $248. Or get this 12-inch Diagonal Zenith Black and White TV, just $69. George's Marathon Price on this three-piece transitional living room, only $299. Or famous Pioneer Stereo Receiver, Speakers and Garage Turntable, complete, just $299. Trust George's, the leader since 1926. I'm teaching Lori how to save money with unsweetened Kool-Aid and sugar. I remember my mom teaching me how Kool-Aid was so inexpensive. She loved the savings. I loved the taste. Kids still do. And today, with our sugar, Kool-Aid costs about 12 cents a quart. Has vitamin C, too. You know, I'll bet one day Lori serves Kool-Aid to her kids. Kool-Aid brand soft drink mix in your sugar. You loved it as a kid. You trust it as a mother. All right, they're still trying to uh, quiet the crowd down down at RFK Stadium. So why don't we do a little weather here? Find out uh, what the weather's going to be in the weekend. Well, I think they'll let Gordon do it. Let okay. Gordon do it. You want to do it? <laughs> yeah, you might. Okay. 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 <laughs> Gee, that had to show. So we're paying it for. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll, we'll just keep each other company. Did you okay. like today? A beautiful, beautiful yeah. day. A great day for the bullets uh, partying and reception right. celebration. Right, and uh, for uh, and for tomorrow when all the big heads wake up, we'll have good weather to uh, <laughs> welcome them, and we'll continue with the good weather right through the entire weekend. The high temperature this afternoon at Washington National Airport got all the way up to 86 degrees. The normal high is 83. Low this morning, 72. Normal low, 63. Currently at the airport, it's 83 degrees, probably a lot warmer than that at RFK. That works out to 28 centigrade or Celsius. The winds are northwest at 18 miles per hour with the humidity at 38 percent. Barometer rising at 29.92. The air quality index today, 41. Fair. The pollen count today, 26, and that's considered low. Hot temperatures once again tomorrow in the desert southwest, 90 in Sacramento, California, 100 in Las Vegas, 110 in Palm Springs, and 103 in Tucson, Del Rio, Texas, 101, San Antonio, 91. 
A cold frontal zone working its way through the northern plains, upper Midwest, and upper Great Lakes area will be accompanied by some cloudiness and a few light rain showers, maybe a thunder shower. 78 in Fargo, North Dakota, 73 in Duluth, Minnesota. Ahead of the frontal zone, temperatures will be somewhat warmer with 90 at Topeka, Kansas, and 83 degrees in Peoria, Illinois. The frontal zone that gave us the showers and thunderstorms yesterday and last night is moved off the eastern seaboard. It will remain stalled, however, over the Florida Peninsula. This is going to give the southern portions of the Gulf Coastal states and the Florida Peninsula through the entire weekend a lot of cloudiness along with locally heavy showers and thunderstorms. But for us, thanks to a high pressure area fair weather system that will be located near Buffalo tomorrow, our weather for the weekend looks real good. 81 in Raleigh, Durham, 81 in Wilmington, Delaware, 73 in Burlington, Vermont, and good weather for the northeastern part of the country as well. Forecast for our area for tonight calls for clear skies, cool temperatures, the overnight low 58 to 64. Sunrise tomorrow at 542, sunset at 833. Only one high tide tomorrow, and that is 1145 in the morning. Forecast for tomorrow, plenty of sunshine, comfortable humidity, the high 78 to 83 degrees for Sunday. Mostly sunny, continue pleasant. Temperatures in the 80s. However, along the beach areas on Sunday, temperatures will be somewhat cooler because of an onshore breeze. Have a real good weekend. Gordon? I think we're about ready, huh? To go back down? Are we, I don't know. I don't think uh, they're... They are they ready. Have started. Okay. okay. Buck, we're coming back out to you. Can you hear me? Okay, we're still here. I don't know. We're kind of up above it all here. We've got Frank Herzog down on the platform. I'm not ever sure we're going to get a program going here. We're going to lower it down to Frank Herzog. Frank! <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Just let the go. <laughs> this is unbelievable. The crush here is just it's incredible. <laughs> I thought we'd seen it all on the trip down East Capitol Street at the, at the White House, the district building, Charles Johnson. Can you believe this? No, I really can't. I can't believe that there's this many people in Washington. We got a lot of people here. Russ Unseld, Kevin Greeby. What do you think? Can you believe this? This is incredible. I never expected anything like this when we came back to Washington. To meet the president um, at the White House, uh, the congressmen and House of Representatives, and then our terrific fans out here. This is unbelievable, Frank. Wes, uh, let me get over here to Wes Unseld. <laughs> Wes, what do you think? Can you believe this? Ever seen anything like it? Frank, I've never seen anything like it, and uh, I doubt if any of us ever will again. It's just amazing. There's got to be three, 4,000 people down here. It's a madhouse. The PA system doesn't work. We're all standing around. Maybe the biggest memory of the day for me is when Elvin Hayes went out to this crowd and the people wanted to touch him like he was magic. It's a fantastic system down here. I just hope we can get out. Back to you folks. Maybe we can send somebody down there to fix the PA system. Yeah. Maybe we got helicopters and Miracle of Electronics and there's Buchanan lowering a microphone down to the guy, right? <laughs> okay, I think we ought to take a little break here now. Okay. Stay with us. <laughs> From this huge warehouse, loaded with furniture, comes the sales event where everything is reduced. The Hub Warehouse Sale, this weekend at all 12 Hub stores. Where else could you find a $749 sofa and love seat with solid oak frames for $448? Or save $100 on a four-piece Armstrong bedroom at $399? Or get a $269 Douglas dinette for $169? Or a wicker look chest for $29? Where? Only in the warehouse sale Saturday and Sunday at the 12 Hub stores. Be there. The aluminum can. It has what America wants, convenience. But it also has what America needs, the ability to save resources and energy because it's recyclable. Recycle an aluminum can and you save about 95% of the energy needed to make aluminum from scratch. And you get paid to do it. The aluminum can. It's too good to throw away. Kaiser Aluminum. Golden opportunities near and far from the Riggs National Bank. Riggs new American Express Gold Bank Card and Old Faithful here, the Central Charger Card. Each can do a world of good for you. The American Express Gold Bank Card provides a minimum $2,000 line of credit with Riggs and extends your check cashing and charging ability worldwide. The Central Charger Card, its blue and gold emblem shows up practically everywhere Washingtonians shop. Apply for both at the Riggs office nearest you.
The End, starring Burt Reynolds as a man who's about to die. What's that supposed to mean? It means lying in the ground with dirt on your face and holding your breath forever. Facing death, he's determined to commit suicide. That's right, baby. Even if it kills him. I'm in love with the idea of killing myself. You're sure having a hard time doing it? Will you come on? Okay, the second thought. Burt Reynolds, in the end, rated R. Now playing at a theater near you, check your newspaper for listing. As soon as they got the uh, public address system straightened out down there at RFK Stadium, we'll take you down when the ceremonies begin. Uh, until then, let's do a little news. With a nurses' strike at Washington Hospital Center now nearly two weeks old, the hospital said today it has hired 20 new nurses and wants to hire more. Hospital spokeswoman Jane Snyder says the hirings have nothing to do with the strike. She says the new nurses are filling previously allotted places. But Snyder also says the hospital might be over-hiring. Talks between the striking nurses and the hospital are due to resume next Monday. There's been lots of criticism of the way the nation's postal service is run. We've just had another increase in postage rates, and of course the end is not in sight. There are some private mail services around the country, though, and they're trying to give the postal service a run for the money. But one of them, in Rochester, New York, seems to be having troubles of its own, as David Nolan reports. Two months ago, the U.S. Court of Appeals ordered the Brennan Hand Delivery Service out of business. But a stay of that order keeps them going while their attorneys ask the court to reconsider. When Pat Brennan started the downtown service in 1976, it was a modest project to supplement the family income. But volume continued to grow, and so is the staff. The payroll now includes her husband, Paul, and five college students working full-time. Last week's postal rate increase alone brought an immediate 15% boost in business. The clients are mostly lawyers and business persons. legal size letters are carried for a dime, larger envelopes a quarter, parcels are priced according to weight. Three. Thank you. You're welcome. See you later. Morning pickups are guaranteed delivery in the afternoon. Just how long the Brennans will be able to keep their appointed rounds is a nagging question. We have no idea when the morning when we start if we're going to be able to continue for the full day. So we are really pushing hard to get some groups organized and just get ourselves before the Supreme Court. One of the courts has disagreed, but let's put it before the real court and find out what nine judges have to say about something that affects the entire United States. The battle with the U.S. Postal Service has cost an estimated $15,000. Contributions from special interest groups and private individuals have helped foot the bill. And with the final round approaching, the Brennans are anxious to find out whether they'll win the fight. David Nolan for CBS News, Rochester, New York. Virginia's Democrats are gathering in Williamsburg, Virginia today to kick off their convention. Their nominee will face Richard Obenshain, the man nominated by the Republicans last weekend in Richmond. Eyewitness News correspondent Susan King has a preview of what to expect. Democrats are attempting to show unity at their convention this weekend. The Democrats are shell-shocked having lost so badly in November's election. And many people feel that the beginning of the end for the Democrats in this state began last June when Henry Howell fought Andy Miller in a bitter primary, and Henry Howell won. So even though a convention is a pretty unusual thing here, no one is sure exactly what will happen. They're hoping to avoid a fight, even though eight are vying for the nomination. Andy Miller kept the appearance of party unity last year after he lost the gubernatorial primary to Henry Howell. He campaigned for Howell, but many of his supporters didn't. Miller goes into this convention with the largest number of delegates committed to him on the first ballot. When he announced he would run for the Senate in January, his old forces began to organize. Miller's entire pre-convention strategy has been to convince Democrats he can win. And I'm here today to ask my fellow Virginians to rally behind my banner uh, so that uh, Virginia, again, can have the type of voice in Washington which represents the majority of our people. Miller faces a crowded field of seven others. His closest opponent is Clive Duval of Fairfax, who has outspent Miller but whose age, he's in his 60s, is seen by some as a strike against him. Of course, we went to convention to avoid the bitterness and wrangling of primaries. So I hope we won't come out of there bitter, and I don't think we will. I mean, obviously, I'll support whoever the candidate is, and I'm sure the others will, too. But there'll be, I think there'll be three or four very tough and interesting rounds of balloting. At small mass meetings around the state in April, like this one in Fairfax County, Democrats elected 2,797 delegates on the basis of who they supported. The other six candidates running for the nomination, Senator Hunter Andrews of Hampton, Rufus Phillips of Fairfax, former delegate Carrington Williams of Fairfax, feminist Flora Crater of Falls Church, Fred Babson of Fairfax, and born-again Christian Connolly Phillips of Norfolk. 
There isn't quite the suspense at the Democratic convention that there was at the Republican convention last weekend, and that's because Andy Miller dominates the field of eight. But it's expected that this convention may be as long as the Republican one. And that's because Andy Miller's forces lost their battle to attempt to get a rule change. That would mean if a candidate, one of the eight, did not get enough support on certain vote, they would have to drop out and not be on the next ballot. As I said, Andy Miller lost that fight, which means all eight candidates will be able to survive through four ballots if they want. And most people feel that means it's going to be a lot of balloting. We'll be in Williamsburg all weekend with reports on Eyewitness News. I'm Susan King, Eyewitness News. Well, they're still celebrating out at RFK Stadium, and when we come back, we'll find out more about that. Stay with us. I won't give up bread, but I'd like one with fewer calories. I don't eat brand cereal, but I do need more fiber. Try Fresh Horizons bread, lower in calories, 30% lower than white, because it's higher in fiber. Five times the fiber of whole wheat. 30% fewer calories, I just changed my bread. Five times the fiber, I just changed my bread. To Fresh Horizons, white or wheat, we add fiber and take out calories. Get a little style in your life. style is like no other and few other cars add more style to it than the new size Chrysler LeBaron young original individual Chrysler class yet sticker price like Cutlass Supreme comparably equipped Chrysler LeBaron add a little life to your style Morris, your horoscope's divine. What do the stars know? Listen, new experience forthcoming. It's true. There's something new for Din Din. Did the stars forget I'm finicky? It's nine lives. New beef and liver. The Moroscope says check that out. <laughs> wow, nine lives. <laughs> new beef and liver from nine lives. Nutritious foods cats really like. Even Morris. Nine lives, it's what's in the dish, not the stars. <laughs> All right, let's go back down our AFK Stadium. Pat Collins and Mike Buchanan. How's it look down there? Gordon, the program has been suspended because of people. Uh, it's crush. They crushed up right around the stage and the bullets. Some of the uh, team officials got a little bit concerned. The bullets had to be pulled off the stage. They're trying to restore just a little bit of order before they start the program. We hope they... Uh, they hope to get it going here in a few minutes, but in the meantime, they're trying to get the crowd's attention to pull them on back. One of the problems, Mike, is uh, there's no real good audio system here. They're trying to talk to the crowd. The crowd doesn't understand what they're saying. So five, ten rows back, everybody's sitting around with a puzzled look on their face. They don't know uh, what's going on. They expected a pep rally. They expected a poem to talk. They expected the bullets to talk. And so far, the bullets have walked on. The crowd pushed forward and uh, broke through the ropes, and now the board managers are concerned. They pulled them back, and they hope to quiet them down. But the people, they don't know what's going on okay. out here. Now, once, once, we lost, once we lost the PA okay. system, right. we really lost control of the situation. So we've got, I don't know, I'm not, not very good at crowds. What, 10,000 maybe? Maybe I'd not say, that many. I'd say about anywhere between eight, 10,000 people out here. They're, they're patient, most of them in the, in the back ranks. It's the ones that are up close okay. trying to get in and get the autographs that, that broke through the rope line and then got off on the stage. So basically it's the same as it was before down there, right? There's just nothing you can do at this now, point, right, Buck? No, there's, uh, you know, until they get the PA system, there's nothing they can do. They're trying to get the crowd to move back away from the stage so they can bring the bullets back out, but there's no way they're going to get the crowd back. They're packed in here tighter than furs in a closet. Okay. All right, we have to close this on a rather somber note. Prince George's County Police say two passenger trains collided in Lanham, just north of the Beltway, this evening. We have no word yet on casualties or damage. We do have a helicopter on the way. We'll have details on the accident uh, throughout the evening as it merits and on Eyewitness News at 11. That is Eyewitness News. We want to say very briefly, this is John Baker's last day, our executive news producer. He is the best, and we'll miss him. Good night.
Portions of the preceding program were recorded.